This is a California ISO Learning Burst on Energy Transfer System Resource or ETSR Management for EIM entities. One of the most important components of the energy imbalance market is the ability to transfer energy between the different EIM participants. These transfers allow the market to optimize the energy mix and are called Energy Transfer System Resource or ETSRs. There are dynamic ETSRs and fixed value ETSRs or base ETSRs in the EIM market. When emergency, reliability, computer or other critical conditions require that dynamic ETSR schedules be manually locked or frozen, it is important that all affected EIM participants and the real-time market operator are notified and informed on what is happening, when it is happening, and why it is happening to assure that reliability is maintained. The ETSR schedule locking function is located in the BAYOP program under the EIM menu on the EIM tab with the name ETSR lock. On this screen it will show the name of the ETSRs, the applicable BAA, and the three time periods in which the ETSRs can be blocked. RTD corresponding to the 5 minute market, RTPD corresponding to the 15 minute market, and STUCK corresponding to the short term unit commitment time frame. The ability to lock ETSR schedules is provided by the ISO to EIM entities for use in real time emergencies and is considered a reliability action. Locking ETSR schedules for economic, market, or other non-reliability purposes is not considered appropriate. Since locking an ETSR will immediately ramp down the ETSR to zero or its non-zero base schedule, it may immediately affect the flow between sending and receiving EIM participants. Please notify the real-time market operator and coordinate with the affected EIM entities prior to locking. EIM entities may consider locking their ETSRs when outages occur that strand, load, or generation being served by a specific ETSR, or when outages create two separate systems within their BAA. In this case, an EIM operator should consider locking all of a participant's ETSR schedules. Locking an ETSR may also become necessary while experiencing computer issues or as requested by market engineering services during an immediate computer system issue that is under investigation. Some examples of relevant computer issues include if a participant is experiencing issues with setting non-zero ETSR limits. In this case, consider locking both directions of the ETSR schedule. Or if the RTBS calculations fail for each of the three runs during a given hour, you may consider locking all ETSR schedules. EIM entities may also want to consider locking their ETSRs if they are experiencing significant EMS, ADS, or other system issues. It is important to evaluate each market time frame in relation to the expected length of the reliability concern. In this example, you can see three dynamic ETSRs, each with its export and import direction noted and they may be locked in the RTD market, the RTPD, or in the stock. Things to consider when determining whether to lock in the RTD, RTPD, and stock are the RTD calculates seven and a half minutes ahead of the applicable time period, RTPD calculates 37 and a half minutes ahead, and stock calculates four plus hours ahead. If the emergency is not expected to last more than a few minutes, locking the RTD but not the RTPD in stuck may be appropriate. If the emergency is expected to last one to three hours, locking RTD and RTPD but not stuck is appropriate. But in this situation, consider adjusting the ETSR schedule limit at the ETAG level and removing the locks if circumstances allow. If the emergency is expected to last for multiple hours, locking all the time periods may be appropriate. 
but in this and perhaps in other situations, the affected ETSR schedule limit should be adjusted at the ETAG level and the ETSR locks removed appropriately as soon as possible. The ETSR locking process has three basic steps. Notify the RTMO and the affected entities prior to locking. Ensure that both the import and export directions of the given ETSR are locked. And finally, ensure that both directions are locked for all of the selected and appropriate market timeframes. To unlock an ETSR, notify the RTMO and the affected parties prior to unlocking, and consider the timing for unlocking each market. Ensure that both the import and export directions of the given ETSR are unlocked, and ensure both directions are unlocked for all of the selected market timeframes and at the appropriate time. Here's an example. If the time is 1300 and an EIM entity would like to unlock an ETSR beginning at 1600, in coordination with the RTMO and the affected EIM entities you can communicate that STUCK will be unlocked at 1400, RTPD will be unlocked at 1520, and RTD will be unlocked at 1547. This provides clear expectations for all participants for the process. The real-time market operator also has important options available for managing the market and ETSRs. The first is Use Previous Solution, which is available in the RTD timeframe. This selection resends the previous binding RTD solution results for the new binding interval to all EIM entities. This may be requested by an EIM entity or by Market Engineering Services in the event that publishing the current RTD run results appears questionable or would be undesirable. If generation or tie thresholds are exceeded, it triggers this same process. The second is Use Advisory Solution, which is available in the RTPD timeframe. This selection places the EIM entity on a path based on the available future RTPD advisory solutions. For ETSR management, this only affects static transfers and not dynamic. It is utilized to prevent undesired RTPD dispatches, for example when telemetry failures or invalid state estimator solutions or too large of a conformance change may result in erroneous instructions and unreasonable dispatches. This option may also trigger automatically if the RTPD module does not complete a valid solution. When this occurs it will be displayed on the RTPD UI as a forced event and the market will automatically broadcast the advisory ancillary service, startups, shutdowns, and transitions. The third is advisory transfers during a contingency, also in the real-time dispatch timeframe. When EIM entities flag a contingency, their transfers automatically use the RTD advisory solutions for their BAA, but internal generation is still optimized for each RTD interval. Please note that advisory EIM transfers will be based on the last RTD solution prior to the contingency being flagged, and that each advisory RTD solution EIM transfer limit will be based on the corresponding advisory interval. While in a contingency, the total net transfer limits for each advisory interval may change, and individual ETSR schedules may vary within the total net transfer limits for each advisory interval. This selection is usable up to the number of advisory RTD solutions available. One important note is that if used previous solution in the RTD timeframe has been selected by the RTMO, the market will ignore the use of the individual block checkboxes and or the block all checkbox options. Let's review management of an EIM contingency from the real-time market perspective. If an EIM entity enters into a contingency, the real-time market operator will first notify all participants via Everbridge of the BA initiating the contingency and the time. They will then call all directly impacted EIM entities via phone. 
review the EIM transfers, and verify that the advisory solution is reasonable. They will then verify that the affected EIM entities are receiving the correct dispatches and assist EIM entities with any issues, questions, or concerns that arise during the contingency, such as creating manual dispatches or imbalance conforming. They will then verify that ETSR dispatches have returned to normal after the contingency and notify all participants via Everbridge that the contingency has ended and the time. In coordination and communication with ISO operators and AIM participants, ETSR shall be limited as follows during planned market maintenance. In advance of the planned computer system outage, for example 24 hours in advance, the ISO will notify all EIM participants of the work and will coordinate with each EIM participant the management of their ETSRs. The California ISO is committed to provide at least one hour of notice for planned maintenance unless it is an emergency patch and to consider EIM reliability. Now let's take some time to discuss coordinated EMS disconnect. Coordinated EMS disconnect is a final backstop process to address severe reliability issues that can't be solved through our normal processes. EIM entities have the ability to disconnect their EMS to ignore ETSR swings. However, ETSRs are part of each entity's ACE net scheduled interchange equation and ETSR dispatches will continue to be generated unless the RTMO and the market are made aware of the disconnect. Disconnecting EMS from the market may stop ACE swings from ETSR changes within the affected BA, but this action has reliability consequences for other associated entities if it is not properly coordinated and communicated. Consider this example of two EIM entities and the California ISO with ETSR schedules between each entity. If EIM entity number two experiences a problem and without coordinating with EIM entity one in the California ISO disconnects their EMS, it creates a situation in which the market is still optimizing solutions based on all three entities. However, EIM entity two is not participating in the market or responding to those optimizations. Without coordination, the market is still accounting for EIM entity number two, and this creates imbalance in the interconnection. To avoid these issues, erroneous ETSR swings should be reviewed and mitigated through other existing market tools in coordination with the RTMO and all affected entities, if possible. Coordinated EMS disconnect should only be used as a final backstop process once all other means have failed to address the problem. Thank you for watching this Learning Burst. If you have further questions, please feel free to contact your client representative or the Customer Service and Stakeholder Affairs Training and Readiness Group.